Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode this morning Like yesterday morning but a bit different Yesterday we did 100 meters Today I've been asked by Mr. Data Scientist To do 20 seconds on Fat Out to see So basically you can use that to kind of look at The your, What your other scores should be So like a power test Short power test And then calculate from there what your other scores should be so we'll see how that comes out if it's kind of close to my scores that I've done before or if they are a bit off so we'll soon find out so let's get on the rowing machine right here and see how hard we can go for 20 seconds and hope that the chain doesn't disconnect like it did yesterday oh yeah has done with 20 seconds on the rowing machine 880 or something watts I put it in calories by mistake and didn't have time to change it so I don't actually know what split I was doing but an average of 113 113? 113? so better than yesterday when the chain slipped and then interesting to see what that means because of our calculations for the splits for other scores like my 2k, 5k etc so we'll let you know when the calculations are done so something for the future yam squad to look forward to so remember to stay or be subscribed for that now it's time to get on with some weights today oh, finished the weight session and the little 20 second essentially max test big part of that being I felt like it's working out how to do that again I haven't really done even though today and yesterday we've done similar sort of 100 meters yesterday high rate max effort and today 20 seconds I'm still trying to figure out the best way to kind of go about it for me and get my body used to it because I'm not used to doing flat out max rate even though I've been doing pretty high rate stuff previous to the World Indoor Rowing Championships in Paris it wasn't sort of max effort so I'd be doing a 40 at 90% 95% not 100% full blown out rate so it's interesting to see the differences in what I'm doing what I did notice was that even though so I did 100 meters we did 100 meters a while back in Charlie Beatney and by like quite a reasonable margin because I couldn't really hit this low splits like I could hold the splits for a while but I couldn't hit those low splits so I think it was 115 was the lowest I was hitting which is not very fast well it's fast but not for me I usually under 110 is, is fine is good I know that sounds weird to say but if I see you at 109 it's like yeah I'm on it but today compared to the last time I did the 100 meters it's like sitting at 111s so even though I've not been doing or getting used to the sprinting stuff like the proper sprinting like the max out effort sprinting like the end of a 2k kind of without the effort previous to that but 100 meters I'm hitting those lower splits already so it's partly maybe a slight bit neurological body getting used to it but also partly working on the strength gains that we've been working on in the weights room and some people have been asking about could you speak more about weights themselves rather than saying would it be good for rowing and I probably I'll get to a video about that about what weights what exercises I'm doing that I think help but again I'm not a weights coach so what might work for me what might not work for you and also it's trying to get a 
a professional's with a lot of experience opinion on the matter for you as an individual rather than what I'm doing from a professional I've spoken to because again we're different people and it would different things work for different people but now after a little bit of a chat after some doing some weights after the 20 seconds max what we're heading to get some food because remember food is fuel unfortunately Charlie's wife is still ill so won't be potentially won't be in the yam cave today but on a positive note you probably can't tell but it is very not windy and it might have rained a little bit but the water is decent so it's looking good to get on the water not today but potentially I don't want to jinx it so potentially in the future very soon oh yeah and we've made it back to the house to fuel up on some delicious chicken sausage and rice because yesterday instead of finishing all of the rice finishing all of that food well I filled some of the gaps with cake and it was delicious but sometimes I've actually been looking at the diet and it looks as if it's a bit or I've been speaking to people about the diet that I've been on and it's a bit too clean and by that I mean maybe just not enough fat for my body to get used to or use the other parts of the diet if that makes sense but that's for a whole nother video I'm gonna be fueling up in that and obviously having enough vitamins and minerals and vegetables and all that too but this is just sort of the bulk part of the meals but as I said will like getting on the water hopefully very soon in the future but a lot of people a lot of the yam squad have been concerned why are you not on the water get on the water you're you're like what like you're doing so much erging indoor stuff well the plan is to get on the water the plan is to get used to sculling again but it is a question of when we are getting on the water i remember the, uh, at university there was through the start of the year i can't remember what year maybe 20 13 or 14 through the year january and february anyway there was i think it was just four or five snowstorms every weekend and so it meant that the school was shutting down every sort of monday or tuesday and then you would get out yam yam's got some kindling fire yeah here doing maybe that no it's mine no 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 but there were snowstorms every weekend and it meant that not only was the school the road shut and everything that meant practice was had to be moved cancelled or changed to the very best of the scenario indoor training so it meant that actually we didn't get on the water until i think april or late april and the first race was late april so i think we got on the week before our first race so that's not what i'm saying now we will get on the water before april or at least that would be good but it's a case of some things are out of our control and it's dealing with the situation dealing with the hand we've been given and so previous to Paris the idea was to get as used to rowing on the air as possible for the indoor rowing championships and then post Paris get on the water but post Paris the weather has been absolutely heinous and obviously rowing is a rowing sport right? um. yeah rowing is a rowing sport as Yam does some headstands and it is outdoors so it means that we have to row in outdoor conditions but where I am now in Bath <coughs> hey. where I am now in Bath the water's been flooding so yes we could get out in the rain get out in the cold get out in the wind whatever it is but the water itself is unrowable it's been flooded there's been debris there's been sort of loads of stuff that would, be, that would damage the boats so we don't want to go on the water and probably couldn't get on the water anyway and especially with my sculling ability it wouldn't be wise because I will end up not keeping the boat level not even level keeping the boat afloat but we will get on the water eventually hopefully it's just a matter of time until we do and I'm really excited to get on to sort of that next stage of the training because winter training it seems 
or it seems that this is the biggest block of winter training I've done for a long time. I know I say winter training as I mean really indoorsy type training and I really enjoy it, especially when you can kind of see progression. And so I'm really looking forward to taking that progression onto the water because the last time I had a good amount of progression, I felt it was easier to row the way I wanted to row because I felt it was easier to apply the pressure because I was a bit fitter and a bit stronger. So that's for future Yam Squad to look forward to and I'm excited to do that. But now I'm going to fuel up, chill out, relax, and then we've got another workout or a couple of workouts to do for the rest of the day. So I didn't really expect to have this chat or a long of a chat, but exciting times ahead. And yes, maybe, possibly, will we ever get on the water? Fingers crossed, Yam Squad. And we have finished recovering, we've finished fueling up, but it's time to get back on Erg like we're on now. So, first Erg of the day, back to the building through the rates session that did quite a lot of pre-Paris, but this time, since we ha the volume is very, very high, there's not much of a need to put the volume as high in this type of session, so it's the same idea, there's still five steps, six steps, but the time in each step is a bit less. So, first step, 30 minutes, then 20, then 10, then 7, then 4, then 2, so it's 73 minutes. Yeah, and so it's almost 20 minutes less than the previous sort of building through the rates, building through the intensities, but the idea stays the same. We have the heart rate monitor on, you keep an eye on the heart rates, and you don't necessarily pay attention too much to the split. You just need to make sure that on each step, you're in the right training zone. You're building through the zones, and it's just getting through each one, and then just building and building and building and building till the very end, and then you stop. So. It always feels like a pretty decent workout, and even it's one of those ones that you that I feel like even when it's a low motivation day, then you can get on and do because you spend so long at the start of the session not really doing much. Really, you're in that UT three zone for me. My heart rate around 120, and so you don't need much effort to get going. And then once you have spent, so in this case, 30 minutes at in that zone even sort of 20 minutes in, you're sort of, okay, I'm ready to step up, and then you keep stepping up. So I recommend this workout if you're looking for something, if you have the time to do it, but also looking for something, oh, I don't really want to do something really high intensity today. This one will get the high intensity in, will also get a long time on the row machine, but also it'll get you sort of warm, ready to go to start with sort of mentally before you actually get going, rather than sort of firing off like yesterday, a woman on, woman off straight away. But let's... Now, get into the session. How are you? Transport workout finished with 73 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes, 18.833k at 156.2 split. Heart rate average 121, so brought down quite a lot by the first two inter first two sections, the 30 minute and 20 minute, with the sort of UT3 or the low heart rate zone and the UT2. Again, another lower heart rate zone, but quite sweaty, get a bit thirsty, so need to fuel up and make sure I'm hydrated as well. Just keeping on drinking, whether it's some squash, just some plain water, or whatever you like to drink as well. I generally stay away from, from fizzy drinks, but be an interesting one today. I spoke about being a, a low motivation, an easy to do low motivation workout. Not that my motivation today was low, but in that first 30 minutes, you kind of get a little bit of, or for this example, this workout, first 30 minutes, the first 10 minutes, you sort of, Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. As these sort of intervals get smaller, so you go from 30, 20, 10, 7, 4, 2, you're thinking, well, I've done 30 and it's only 20. If I've done 20, it's only 10, 10, I've only 7, 4, and then there's only 2. So it kind of motivates you as you go on, as you're like, well, 
the, the intervals are getting smaller and then you can see sort of the target meters instead of 5k it's only two and a half k or 2k or 600 meters for last interval or or whatever that target is it's always less the next interval so you're thinking well oh i just only have to get to that stage if that makes sense but hopefully today so today is a double erg day and then going forward hopefully the double erg days will be reducing as the weather or at least the rain calms down so the water can flatten not necessarily flatten out lower down so we can actually get boats onto the water but there have been boats on the water lately bigger boats and like i said earlier my sculling isn't too great so not that i need really calm conditions to be out there we're going to get out in a double to help sort of speed up the sculling process sculling learning process again but it is i, I can't exactly go out in tricky conditions like i could in a pair versus if i in a single if that makes sense but now after any session you've guessed it it's time to fuel up because remember food is fuel and we've made it back to fueling up post ergo we've got some delicious you've guessed it rice but not chicken tuna and that will be it for today's episode as the recovery continues for the next day i got a lovely steady erg this evening on the erg because remember erg is bay and as always, Yam Squad, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, hit that like button, and keep your fingers crossed that we will eventually get on the water and continue rowing because rowing is a rowing sport. Oh, yeah.